and I'm proud to represent them before you today. I look forward to your questions. Thank you for your testimony, and I'll recognize myself for five minutes for questions. Uh, Director Nelson, I'm sorry, uh, Under Secretary Nelson, I'm trying to understand Treasury's thought process with respect to beneficial ownership. We have three separate rules. Uh, one is the reporting rule on the collection of data. The other is the access rule that goes into effect on Monday. If that's right, Director Yaki, Monday. Um, and then you have a rule that has not yet been proposed that rescinds the 2018 um, customer due diligence, the CDD uh, requirement. Um, so how many companies have filed beneficial ownership information? About half a million. About a half a million. Um, how, many, how many do we expect to file? Director Gacky? 30, 32 million. 32 million. So we've got about 500,000 out of 32 million. Okay. Um, and at the same time, all 32 million are required to adhere to the CDD requirement, right? So they're already providing this information. Uh, the NFIB survey said 90% of small businesses don't even know that this rule exists. So we have a massive problem. But we also have a ma massive problem about who can access this database. You said, uh, Undersecretary, you said um, a small pilot program of users will to access the registry first. Uh, what agencies are part of that pilot? So um, just the clarification, the small businesses wouldn't be subject to the customer due diligence rule. Well, they are subject to it the through their banks. The banks are subject Correct. to it. Yeah, financial. So just because I put the obligation on a colleague to put an obligation on you doesn't mean that you're not obligated. Right. So well, if, they, if they have an account at right. financial. So that's how many are part of the pilot program to access the information? Uh, so we're... Uh, thinking about phase access uh, in about five tranches. So the first phase would be those federal partners that Who are those? Works closely, most closely with. So imagine FBI, uh, HSI, DEA, and the like, okay. IRS, CI, of course. And they'll have full access to the registry? Uh, I'll defer to Director Gacky. I, I, Chairman, yes. Um, access to the extent, with guardrails, you know, any, ex, any user will have to engage in training, um, meet the requirements of the Corporate Transparency Act to be able to access that information. But through this ex, uh, the pilot program, we'll first focus on those high volume users we've seen with Bank Secrecy Act reporting, kind of the, the big law enforcement agencies. Okay, so uh, and wh when, when do you think we'll have a proposed rule to rescind the CDD requement? That's something we're presently and actively working on. I Is believe there a goal? The statute, um, the statute uh, um, envisions uh, the rule by, I believe, next January 2025. Right. At, but this current requirement, the reporting requirement, is obligated for that deadline as well. So, I mean, we're going to have people find out this year that they have this massive new requirement to a domestic intelligence gathering organization. And they'll find out for the first time that FinCEN exists. The average small business will find out for the first time FinCEN exists. Then they'll start asking questions about uh, what do you do? And then they'll find out you collect all their bank records as well. Uh, this is an enormously cumbersome and complicated thing. Director Gacky, as I've told you in private, uh, you have a heavy obligation here trying to fix a mess created uh, by your predecessor and trying to dig out of that mess and, per and preserve and protect American civil liberties in doing so. We've not yet seen you adhere to these exchanges of letters that we've had, and I expect better from your agency. We need you to be better for American civil liberties and to make sure that people are protected. But let me get into this question. We, we currently have suspicious activity reports under the Bank Secrecy Act. You process these. Uh, you have you know, over 300,000 suspicious activity reports um, uh, in January. Uh, a 240% increase from the number of reports we received just a decade ago, in January of, uh, of 2014. Um, in 2017, there's a report by the Bank Policy Institute and it says that uh, it suggests about 4% of SARS are acted on by law enforcement. Director Gacky, do you, do you agree with that percentage? Uh, uh, Chairman, I, I respectfully um, question that statistic. Um, what is the statistic then? Uh, so I, I'd like to get back to you, but I think that we are 
doing our best to improve the feedback loop so we can actually draw in, in explain the value of suspicious okay. activity reporting. Okay, but let me ask you this question. Do you collect statistics on the percentage of, cigar, uh, of SARS that are used by law enforcement? That is something that we are beginning to. It's okay. actually a You've been collecting SARS for how, how many decades as an agency? Several decades. And yet we don't know how law enforcement uses them. And at the same time, this administration has just proposed a new collection for investment bankers of new bank secrecy requirements. Yet we don't know what we're doing with the existing information, the effectiveness of it. We have a 4%, uh, uh, we're saying 4% of SARS are used for law enforcement, and you're saying that's not correct, but we don't have data to back it up. You should have data to back it up. The agency should be better. Um, and it's not just a question of public policy. This is about Americans' protection. It is about American civil liberties. It is a high obligation. With that, uh, yield back and uh, 